Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way. And today I'm going to give you my final thoughts on the Emotion V12 HT. And I'm going to tell you how this wheel caused one of the most traumatic experiences I had on EUC, which you might also call emotional damage. So let me tell you more about it. Wrong way. And first up, also huge thanks to my e-wheel for providing me this wheel for testing purposes. If you want to get a wheel like this, which you shouldn't... Wait a minute! Or another wheel, which you should... In Europe, feel free to use their site and my coupon code wrong way for an additional 5% off. I also do receive kickbacks from those orders, so you also do help out the channel by using those links. Anyways, in this video I'm going to talk mostly about the well, V12 HT. I'm also give you some information which I didn't include because I didn't know about it at the time of recording the V12 review. So if you want to find out about all of the features of the V12, like you know the pedals, trolley handle, lights, etc., please check out my V12 review because a lot of the stuff here is quite similar. So I'll try to keep this video short, just like the range of this wheel. All right, so first I wanted to give you an update on the self-acceleration cases on the V12 HD. I already made a video about it before, there have been five or six cases of the V12 actually accelerating by itself, which is super dangerous. So, so let's start from the beginning. For some reason, there's some sort of bug in the Emotion V12 HT or even Emotion V12, where at some point for, for apparently no reason, the wheel accelerates by itself. And this is so traumatic because, you know, I had cutouts on Gotways. I had cutouts on the Veteran Abrams because of a hall sensor issue slash software issue. I overpowered the Kingsong S22. Like, I know that this stuff happens. It's still very bad, but partially when it comes to water ingress, overpowering, etc., it could be also my fault. But here, it's software. And the biggest problem is you can't actually predict when it happens. You don't know if it happens. You don't know anything from Emotion if they solve the issue or not. And judging by the fact that two or three weeks ago there was another case of it, like, what is happening? That's the problem. The thing that is worse about this bug than a cutout is that it accelerates. So you sudden, you, you're riding, you suddenly see the sky and you fall your, on your back with a lot more impact than if you would have a cutout. So if the wheel would turn off and you fall forwards. Luckily, I could walk away from that with just a sore ass, both mentally and physically. Additionally to that, the wheel just accelerates and then goes somewhere, like it can hit someone, that's a problem. I, I am very like intense about it just because it causes so much stress. Because not only are you in danger, a lot more, that's why I always right now with the Bobblebee backpack on the V12 HT, but you can also hit someone with a lot more impact, not just the wheel, you know, rolling it out, tumbling it out, it's fine. It actually becomes a, you know, accelerated projectile and that's what one of the emails was describing to me and was the latest software just to be clear guys just this case alone is a pass for me on the v12 ht and until in motion makes some sort of statement about it or just contacts the people affected that you know they found out what what was the issue they fixed it they changed something i can really see how emotion can call themselves a brand that cares about safety. Like, I know the cases that happen are still very rare, but still that there are happening, still to this day with the newest software, is just, uh, yeah, uh, that's, that's, that's all I can say about it, really. Another thing I didn't know when I was recording the V12 review is that none of the in-motion wheels except for the V13 have passive cell balancing. I know I've seen comments, Adam, what are you talking about? They do have balancing. Well, in-motion themselves, replied to me and then they replied to me that the v13 is the first wheel to have passive cell balancing and also just by experience with other service centers and service people of ucs they've been telling me that they need to manually balance the uh, for example emotion v8 v5 v10 after a while after I don't know, 10 15 000 kilometers because um, they just have so much less range and you know at 50 percent for example the pedals will go up now, in some cases, you might still have a very healthy pack and, you know, it will be fine. But in some cases, you don't. And that's what passive cell balancing is for. So the feature, maybe I should have said that earlier, of passive cell balancing is that when you charge this wheel to 100%, all of the serious 
uh, of batteries will have reach, will reach the same voltage. What Inmotion has is they have a limiter, so if one series of batteries reaches the peak voltage, then it stops charging. That's it. So it doesn't make this process of actually making all of the separate series reach the same voltage. It does have balancing between the packs. So I've been actually charging this wheel to 100% and I was looking at the voltages between the packs because that's what you can do on the app. And um, yeah, they go pretty closely to 100.3, 100.4, not exactly the same thing. Uh, but close enough, when I unplugged the charger, that they were at the same voltage, but then at, a bit later they were at a different voltage. I guess it's better than nothing, but just for this feature alone, or, or the lack of it, I would go with a Kingsong 16X or 18XL, because those wheels do have passive cell balancing. I think that another issue which is connected to it is that the differences between the left and the right, right pack get really big, I think because of the lack of passive cell balancing or just the way the wheel drains the battery because both batteries are connected separately to uh, the motherboard, which is also good because if one fails and the other one still works, but it would have to be really a critical fail to make this happen. Anyways, what happens is if you don't charge this wheel up to 100%, sometimes you might have an issue that at the 50% battery or 15% battery, really depends on your battery pack and how used it is, it will just tilt your pedals up, it will say that there is an issue and you can't ride anymore. That's what I had in Paris on the V12 and my friend Michal here in Warsaw has that issue as well. Um, when he doesn't charge the wheel to 100% every once so often and drains the battery. So that's another thing. I think this is connected to the fact that the packs are just misbalanced and even the series themselves. Just a bit annoying because this doesn't happen to me on other wheels. One more thing that is just slightly electronically not pleasing is that um, this wheel has some sort of weird mechanism to the charge board or weird electronical layout. So if you try to connect the charger to the wheel, there is a spark. Now the charger is plugged in. which shouldn't happen. Because usually when I, for example, connect the charger to a veteran Sherman, which is plugged into the wall, then like nothing happens, it just starts charging. And here there's a spark. I don't know how to really explain it. Uh, the way around it is to just either have the charger not connected to the wall outlet and plug it in and then to the wall outlet. So now the charger is unplugged. Thing. Or you can just leave the wheel on because then there is no issue. Now the charger is plugged in and the wheel is on. No spark. So I think they just need to update the firmware with that just for the charge port to be active even if the wheel is off. So yeah, just minor inconvenience but weird. That's, that's what they have, that's what I've heard also from other users on Instagram, YouTube, etc. All right, but now let's talk about what actually makes the Emotion V12 HT HT. First thing you can notice right away, more orange. Orange rim, orange button. I put my orange four inch door hinge in storage and ate porridge with George. <laughs> I guess that's a little bit of styling. If you like orange, cool. If you don't, I guess you will have to deal with it. However, the changes to the rim are not only the color, it's also the thickness of it and its robustness. And I gotta tell you, yeah, I, I think it's a good upgrade here. It's, it will be a lot more difficult to bend this rim. However, it's also heavier, which will lead to less range, which I'll talk about later. Another thing they changed is also the tire. Now we have more of a off-road tire with a thicker compound. Now this is great uh, when it comes to just the overall durability and the fact that it's more difficult to damage the rim again, but it is also a heavier tire and I don't particularly like the thread on it. The original thread that I had before on the V12 HD was great. I loved it, one of my favorite tires ever. But this, this I just don't like. The problem is that if you look here, we have a very thick middle strip and then we have some thinner strips on the side. So if you have this tire pumped up to its original pressure, like 32 PSI, and if you pump it up above, it's even worse, then it just, 
you sort of balance on this, but then it tips over, then it gets train tracking, then you, you can't really balance on this thing well, especially at high pressure. Now, if you lower the pressure, it gets a lot better, but then you lose some of the carvability and bounciness of the tire. So yes, I would probably advise to ride the, with this wheel at like 25 even, well, get into the danger zone when it comes to bending the rim or 30 psi but anything above just doesn't work it's just so hard to balance and you can hear very well which part is gripping and riding straight and turning and it still gets tra train tracking and once it gets train tracking and you like pull over to this side it's yeah, I, I just don't really like this tire. You need to lean a lot uh, to also turn. Um, yeah, not a fan of it. Some further small changes are the new you know, mudguard, which is a bit better. But now the rear kickstand doesn't have anything to hold on to. So I hope the friction will stay strong because there's no locking here like there was before. Furthermore, because the tire is now bigger. Oh, let me do that. This kickstand isn't as sturdy anymore and it's way easier to let it tip over this side so you need to remember about it if you put this wheel at a slightly angled slope it might fall see So now let's talk finally about the range on the V12 HT. And I gotta say, I did a range test. I thought it would be a lot better, but it was just 65 kilometers via GPS. Now, granted, it was pretty cold that day, but I was also riding pretty mellowly. And compared to the 80 or so kilometers of GPS that I had on the V12, this is a lot less. I expect to have between 10 or 25% uh, less range on the V12 HT compared to the V12 HS. I think the biggest reason for that is that it might just draw a bit more current than the V12 HS. That's why it's a bit more zippy. Uh, it uh, has a heavier rim and a heavier tire. And this is some sort of feedback that I also got from other Inmotion V12 HT users. The range on this thing is just worse than the HS. Furthermore, uh, during this range test, the light, last five kilometers I was going really slowly, so uh, it was almost like limp mode, and below 3% I can't actually ride the wheel. It tilts me back, and this is just frustrating because if I have a battery from 0 to 100% charge, I want to use the whole thing. But maybe the main thing you're asking yourself is whether this wheel is actually high torque. They advertise it as high torque, and if they meant by this high torque, then it might be right but high torque like lots of torque not really like it does feel a bit zippier and apparently the coils the copper windings are a bit thicker on this wheel but maybe due to the heavier tire and the heavier rim maybe due to just like not enough changes in the motor or in the controller this wheel has pretty much the same torque results as the v12 hs both are struggling at 40 degrees incline All right, with some trouble, but please get off. Please get off. It please says, off. warning by dangerous driving, please do not drive excessively. Both of them overpower at around, that's where they start, like 35 degrees or a bit below. So even if I wanted to do some tricks, you could hear the motor struggling. And again, it's the same threshold as on the HS. So this is just a bummer because, well, they made the HT uh, and I was fantasizing about the V12 HT in my initial review of the V12. But when it comes to braking and accelerating, it actually doesn't feel so light. Uh, I think you'd need a little, like a lot more actually strain to brake and accelerate on this wheel compared to the 16X or Kingston 18XL. You know, an upgrade with the rim, upgrade with the tire if you you know want to ride with this sort of tire um, maybe it's running a bit cooler but just as far as i've heard in the community those wheels 
tend to overheat a bit uh, when doing inclines. I wasn't testing that myself, so you know, don't take my word for it, but that's what I heard. I don't think this is HT. This is just a bit of a zippier feeling wheel with some upgrades to its components. And the trade-off you're making in top speed I don't think it's like that worth it and also in in range. All right guys, so let's sum it all up. What do I think about the V12 HD? And as much as I still love the ride, I like the software a lot, uh, how it rides, how it's balanced. And just like with the V12, I do enjoy riding this wheel when it works. I don't like the range that much of the V12 HT. It doesn't have that much more torque. It feels a bit zippier, but nothing like too exciting. And the fact that it doesn't have any passive cell balancing and sometimes has those issues if you don't charge it up to 100%, just make it a wheel that I can't really wholeheartedly recommend. So instead of getting this, I will still recommend a Kingsong 18XL or even the 16X uh, because I think that those wheels are a lot more robust, a lot more dependable and don't have those issues that I talked about here in the V12 and V12 HT. So with that said, if you're still here, leave a like on the video, subscribe to see more content like this. I'll see you in the next video. See you soon.